Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and those who have yet to make up their minds. I am your host this morning, JustJack.com, well, JustJack.co, you know, that's a whole different Bible story, I'm not going to get into it, but that's JustJack with two S's, J-U-S-S-T, J-A-C-K dot C-O, as in company. Yes, I run my own company, I, I'm a self-made woman paying off double taxes, just kidding, um, when we were called to do this um, audio. Uh, as you guys know, I table tip. So uh, my form of um, mediumship is physical mediumship. And so uh, I communicate with spirit, the other side, whatever you want to call it. The in inward is what I call it. I connect within uh, with the table and the table moves back and forth. And they said, uh, quit going through the old stuff. We're going to give you new stuff to work on. And I said, okay, well, what's the first one? And they said, forgiveness. And I thought, wait, huh, what? what? You want me to teach on forgiveness? Me, of all people? The queen who can hold a grudge? Just kidding. <laughs> well, that's how I thought about myself, right? But then I remembered, you're not the queen who can hold a grudge. You're one who doesn't hold a grudge. And so I'm going to give this uh, talk now as best as I can from where I stand. And hopefully you get a little blessing from it. And if you do, make sure you share with somebody. And if you don't, then just turn me off and go about your merry day. <laughs> um, Kelly Pickler, actually, has a song. And in the lyric, it says, forgiveness is such a simple word but it's so hard to do when you've been hurt you see forgiveness usually derives from hurt and sometimes this hurt comes from an outside source I mean, there is hurt that comes from within that we usually create ourselves but that's a whole nother bible story we'll talk about that a different time hurt that comes from external sources when we really think about it, they have no power. Because I think it was the Buddha that said, nothing external from me has any power to affect me internally. Hmm. You may want to write that down. Nothing external from me has any power to affect me internally. I'm the captain of this ship. I'm calling the shots. I am loving light, and only that which is of loving light can enter my vibrationless frequency. That means you can't take me down. And if I'm going to go down, I'm going to do it myself. That's what uh, Whoopi Goldberg told the queens on Drag Race. You know, she was talking about comparing yourself to others. And, and she told those queens straight up. She said, it's not only, it's, what did she say? Um... It's not that they're better. They're as good. You are as good. Put yourself up here and not down here. Never start yourself down here. Everybody else will do that for you. They'll try to put you down here. Always walk up this way in the light with your head up and an F you on your lips. <laughs> you know, you're not taking me down. Nothing is taking me down. Not you, not anybody else except me. If I'm going to go down, I'm going to do it myself. But I'm not going to let you do it, is what she told them. And I remember she said, it won't necessarily always make people want to be your friend. <laughs> but if that's okay with you, you can, be in, you can be an individual. And it's fantastic. Sometimes lonesome, but fantastic. <laughs> now let's not... not uh, Let's not get off on a whoopee tangent. Back to forgiveness. That's what my whole conversation is about. Where was I? Oh, oh yes. Okay. Forgiveness. Forgiveness sometimes derives from hurt. Oh, and boy, is hurt painful. Oh my gosh, especially on the heart. By a show of hands, how many people have had their hearts hurt? <laughs> Actually. By a show of hands, how many of us have had our hearts hurt in 2021 alone? Okay. 
<laughs> and let me tell you, like Dolly says, nothing moves slower than a slow healing heart dying to men. Because when the spirit is broken and the memory starts, nothing moves slower than a slow healing heart. But there is hope. You see, when those outside sources hurt us and the spirit is broken and the memories start, because those memories, the memories will get you. I mean, the mind will constantly replay the worst scenarios over and over and over again. Oh, he did this to me. Remember when she said this about me? They treated me a certain type of way. Uh-uh. He put his hands on me. Okay. <laughs> Wait a second now. Wait a second. No, 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 no. Pump the brakes. Ah! No, 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 no. No, no, no. There is no he put his hands on me. I shouldn't have said that one. Just jumped on. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. None of that up in here. Because if that was the case, he put his hands on me. No, no. I'd be like Paul the Apostle right into you, locked up in a jail cell while the brother lay cold in the morgue. <laughs> no, I'd be the last person he ever put his hands on. No, no. Like I told my coworker one time, when her husband thought it was okay to use her for a punching bag, I told her, there is absolutely no reason for anyone to put their hands on Anybody else, <laughs> especially me. Okay. <laughs> well, well, I mean, if, if well, there, well, there are certain cases that if uh, you know a specific gentleman wishes to place their hands on me in a certain type of way, who am I to say no? <laughs> Sorry, had to lower the mood. It just got too serious for me. <laughs> That's for a different day. I keep getting sidetracked. Oh my goodness! I'm here to speak on forgiveness. So, so far we know where it derives from, right? Sometimes it comes from outside sources. We know what usually causes it, but what is it? Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve it or not. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. Pay close attention. Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve it or not. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting, nor does it mean condoning or excusing offenses. It simply means to let it go. Let that ish go. But Jack, you don't know what they did to me. Let it go. But Jack, you don't you didn't see how they acted, Jack. Let it go. But Jack, you didn't see how their actions caused others to hurt. Let it go. Not for them. Let it go for you. You see, the stuff that we keep inside begins to fester. It don't just go away. It doesn't just go away anywhere. It begins to fester. No, uh-uh. It begins to grow into monsters. Monsters. And when other people come to you, these monsters lash out. And when people come into your vibrational frequency to, to show you love because you festered up these monsters of unforgiveness, those monsters lash out. And these monsters start turning into illness. And these monsters start creating dis-ease within the body. Our old friend Louise Hay teaches us that for every physical ailment, there is a metaphysical reason behind it. Cancer, for example, derives from fear. Fear derives from resentment. 
Resentment is derives from the unwillingness to forgive. You think you're holding a grudge, but that grudge is slowly eating you alive from the inside. That grudge is just fear festering up. Fear getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And what does Master Yoda say about fear? Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And nine times out of ten, you're the one who's suffering. <laughs> you're the one who's suffering. You think those people give a darn about you? Those people that have chosen to hurt you, they knew what they were doing when they were doing it. They knew they were going to hurt you. You think they miss sleep at night because of how they made you feel? Psh, please. Uh-uh. They'll play the blame game. They'll talk about how you deserved it. They don't care. They're hurt themselves. That's why they hurt you because hurt people hurt people. You have got to forgive for your own well-being. I remember... Uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, the late, great Dr. Wayne Dyer, describing forgiveness so beautifully. He quoted Mark Twain, and he said, uh, Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on a heel that has crushed it. Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. How beautiful is that? Just imagine a violet standing there, minding her own gosh darn business, and this heel, or this person comes, and the heel of their foot just tramples all over the poor thing. But she still gives the fragrance. Think about it. When we forgive others, we say, I choose to give you love, even though you have hurt me. Because remember, forgiveness is a choice, it's a decision. Just like love is a choice, and love is my decision. Even though you have hurt me, I choose love to give you. I choose to give you love, even though you have crushed my spirit. Even though whatever, whatever, in this moment, I choose, I have a deliberate decision to choose love because love is our natural state. And when we forgive others through love, we set ourselves free. So how do we do this? Because Lord knows it ain't easy. <laughs> There's one technique I want to leave you with this week. It's actually... Uh, a technique I teach to my students in the uh, Spring Awakening course, which is coming up right around the corner. So make sure you enroll in that. Um, I think it's $25 and it's quick, easy, four week course. It's a course for the, um, that, that new awakened part of you, you know, spring is when the flowers bloom, when, when new things come into our existence. And it's a course that we offer just to jumpstart your own spring awakening. So make sure you guys enroll in that. But anywho, the technique is writing the letter of forgiveness to myself. So take out your pencil and pad and really sit down in your sacred space. And for those of you students who um, have worked with me in the past, um, you, they, I, I teach how to create your own sacred space, right? And so for those of you guys, for those of you students who are listening to this, make sure you really tap into this space when you do this technique, okay? This is just for, for those of you class students. Anyways, you take your three deep breaths and you really ground yourself and you let spirit come and write through you, okay? You let your highest self and that 
smaller part of yourself work together to write a letter for you to you from you. So when we write this letter, my letter looks something like this. It says, <clears throat> my dearest Jack, the love of my life. <laughs> Give your adulation, right? Jack, I love you. And that's an honest to goodness sentence. I mean, I love me some Jack, okay? I could not get enough of Jack. <laughs> Excuse me. The next line will say, my sincerest apologies. This is the part where you guys ask for forgiveness, right? My sincerest apologies. Please forgive me for allowing external circumstances to affect you internally. Please, my love, forgive me for, for the things that I continue to put you through. Please, Jack, in this moment, I ask for forgiveness for putting other things and other people before you. Please accept my apology. And on the next line, I make a commitment and a vow to myself. And it looks something like this. On the next line, it'll say, from this day forward, my love. I promise to put you in front of everybody and everything else that comes into my vibrational frequency. From this day forward, I make a commitment to love you first thing in the morning and connect with you the moment I wake up. Before I put on my makeup. <laughs> I'm going to connect with you, Jack, because I know in this connection, you and I will be one. One with the source of all that is. One with the source of love. And through this love, we will be able, through the rest of our day, to live and breathe and have our being no matter who or what circumstance comes in front of us, we together will be able to battle it head on in the highest, purest vibration. For we stand at the forefront when it comes to the battle of love. Then I close it with, lots of love, my queen. Signed, your friend that needs forgiven forgiveness signed your friend that needs to be forgiven just jack.com so three easy steps when you guys write your letter to yourself number one adulation give the adulation give the applause number two what needs to be forgiven and number three make a commitment to yourself do this throughout this week in your quiet time and let me know how it goes and some of you guys think okay we're finished bible's closed no honey this is not where we end that was just the beginning now we flip the page and we write a letter of forgiveness for ourself from ourself Big S to ourself, small s. You see, uh, the one we just wrote a little while ago, that was an apology letter. We're asking for forgiveness. Now, we're going to actually forgive ourselves. Because when we forgive ourselves, it becomes easier for us to forgive others. So now, we're gonna write a letter to respond. A letter of actual forgiveness, and it will look something like this. Oh, 
my dearest darling, justjack.com. You see, the reason we put Jack versus JustJack.com is because Jack represents the highest, purest form of love that we have. That's our highest self, right? And that's who we're asking forgiveness from. We're asking for forgiveness from our highest selves, from that little JustJack.com, which is the ego, right? The ego is the character that we create to get us through life, right? Um, and we'll we talk more about that in different classes. We don't have time to talk about all that right now. But from Big Jack to LittleJustJack.com, my dearest darling, JustJack.com, I love you. I always have loved you, and I will always love you. <laughs> That's a Dolly quote. <laughs> the next line will say, "You are perfect." Again. Give adulation for yourself. Remember who you are. You are perfect, Jack, in every way, shape, and form. Oh, little just Jack.com, I forgive you and I accept your apologies. But don't let it happen again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, this is a part where you really forgive yourself and understand why. I forgive you and I accept your apologies, littlejustjack.com. And it doesn't matter what you think you did wrong. It doesn't matter what you think you did wrong to me or others. It doesn't matter what they're all saying about you and who you should be or how you should act. The guilt and the shame that you feel towards yourself does not matter to me, my love. What matters to me is this. And only this. I forgive you, JustJack.com, because my God has got a second chances. <laughs> and when Jonah was in the belly of the whale, <laughs> all he had to do was to pray and ask for forgiveness. And that whale spit him out in the exact place that he was meant to be. Okay? Come on, church. <laughs> Turning into a reverend, y'all. Turning into a reverend. Here's my ultimate wish for you, little JustJack.com. You may be driving yourself nuts with your own guilt and shame. You may even find yourself in the belly of a whale. But my prayer for you is that I, I pray that that whale spits you out into the exact place needed for the fulfillment of your own becoming. I love you, Mas. Signed, your friendly forgiving friend, Big Jack. And we forgive ourselves. And my prayer this week for you, anybody who's listening, for you that's listening, my prayer is that you forgive yourself because you owe it to yourself. This week in your quiet space, think of who or what you need to forgive, not only outside of yourself, but where do we need forgiveness internally? What needs to be taken care of within? So that way, forgiving the outside sources becomes easier and easier and easier. That's a question you want to ponder this week. Much love to all of you guys. If you want to share, feel free to share. Add us on social media and all of our platforms. Just check.com with two S's because one just ain't enough. Uh, we're on the TikTok. Well, TikTok. TikTok, Han. Go, go read Tik Nhat Han. <laughs> Do yourself that favor. Um, but we're on the TikTok now. So make sure if you're on the TikTok, you go give us a follow and just check. Just check. Um, and remember to enroll in our Spring Awakening class. I think we start in February with that one. Um, and also take advantage of the $1 offer happening in February as well. Uh, for those links, make sure you reach out to me. Get those links. They're also on our website, I believe. Um, we'll see you next Sunday. Be a blessing, not a curse. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>